In this episode of Viral Rewind, we're looking at the one-half DOS virus. Now, this is actually an interesting virus that I've wanted to demo for quite some time, but could never quite get the computer parameters right for being able to have one-half work properly. But on my Patrick Bell Legend 100 CD here, I've got it configured so we can actually see one-half and what it does. So we have onehalf.com in our directory there. It's 34,154 bytes. And for some extra added context, we're going to load up FDisk, but i got to get it into the right folder first. And if we look at our partition information, we see we have a 10 megabyte disk on this system. Now, this Packard Bell actually has a 2 gigabyte hard drive, but I've configured in the BIOS setup to think that it has a Type 1 hard disk, which is only 10 megabytes of capacity by changing the drive geometry settings. And so... It gives us this small disk, and that's kind of necessary to really show how one half is going to work. And this video is probably going to be a bit long because it's going to be in two sections. We're going to have the first part here showing one half and what it does, and then the second half of this video will actually be showing how to remove the one half virus and restore the system to working order. So I'm going to go ahead and load up one half from the root directory there. And we get this little printout about a file that's not found because apparently it's an infected file that's looking for a companion. And we, of course, don't have it on here. And we saw from our disk, again, we have a 10 megabyte size disk, but we only have maybe about 1.2 megabytes free because I've populated it with like five folders worth of MS-DOS files and PC Doctor here to kind of simulate what it's going to do. The only last thing I need to do is go back to edit. And we're going to check our autoexec.net file. And I'm going to add reboot.com in there. And we check our date. It's the 4th of April, 1994. And now we're just going to let the computer boot over and over. So what happened there when I loaded up one half is one half immediately went and infected the master boot record of the primary hard disk here on the packet bell. And what it will do is with every time the computer boots up with the infected master boot record from one half, one half will take two unencrypted cylinders or sectors, there's some debate if it's cylinders or sectors, at the end of the hard disk, encrypt those using a exclusive or bitwise encryption method, and then increment its way toward the beginning of the disk at every boot, encrypting again another two cylinders or sectors until it gets halfway to the start of the disk there. And when it does, then we'll see a payload there indicating, hey, you know, your disk is infected with one half here, or I should say it's encrypted. And we'll see the consequences of that, and then of course we'll see again later in the video how to remove and clean the one half virus off the system. And it's interesting because there are cases of people that have gotten infected and gotten the payload of the one half virus. There's actually a Google Groups message board I came across where someone actually had the one half virus appear on them after some time trying to figure out what it is. And of course, they got help by immediately identifying what it is. But yeah, it's a proof of case of someone getting the one half virus. In fact, the one half virus was discovered in 1994 and this message was in 1997. So, again, as we'll see, if you have a very large hard disk and it's encrypting two cylinders or sectors at a time at each boot and you had a big disk with lots of data, it takes quite a while for one half to encrypt half the disk worth to get to its payload. So, just from that you can gauge how long this user might have had one half on their system encrypting all their data. So as we're seeing here, the Packard Bell is continuously rebooting and again one half is doing its encryption routine at every boot process. So when it gets halfway, we'll see the payload of one half and what the consequences of having half the disk encrypted with one half will be. And after about 
Two dozen plus or so restarts of the computer, we get this printout from one half. This is one half. Press any key to continue. And so this is one half's payload when it has successfully gotten to half of the hard disk after doing its encryption routine. And so this is how a lot of users, like I showed in that Google Groups post, found out about having one half on their system because they just booted their system up one day and they get this pop-up saying, this is one half. And they're thinking, well, what is this? And well, again, one half of these on their system and it's encrypted half their disk. So half their data on the second half of the disk has been encrypted and whatever they have on the first is probably okay. But anyway, let's go ahead and try booting DOS here. Oops, it's not going to work that way. I need to press the F8 key. Again, this payload will persist every time the computer is booted. It's on this date. Okay, that's that. And so the other thing about one half I didn't mention is when the computer does boot up with the infected master root record, it will load one half into memory so it can infect .com and .exe files. It also has to reside in memory loading for that master boot record to be able to decrypt files on the fly. This way the user is not aware of the encryption going on. So if we go to, let's see, test one, go into edit, our auto exec that, that file, we'll see everything looks fine. We got that there, we can load up the command interpreter just fine. But as I say, we of course have half the disk encrypted with one half. So let me boot from a, well actually before that, let me just see something out of curiosity. Because this is also going to play into the second half of this video talking about cleaning one half. Because F-Secure does have a utility made for getting rid of one half on infected systems. And I'm just curious what it's going to do with one half resident. Virus is resident in memory. Partition table is infected. Need any key to reboot. And I don't know if you heard the floppy drive there right at the beginning, but it seemed like one half was also trying to infect the disk, but it is right protected, so it can't do anything about it. An interesting thing I found here, though, is if I have high memory.sys loaded, which is the memory driver for DOS, this tool here is not able to see the virus in memory, but it does give a warning, but then it can't tell you that the partition table is infected. So if high memory.sys is loaded, it seems that this cleaning program doesn't work. But it does confirm that we have the virus in memory and that the partition table is infected. Let's go ahead and restart. And now we'll boot from a clean diskette here. And from booting from a clean diskette, we'll be able to show what happens if you try to use the system from a boot diskette or if you should happen to put a clean master boot record on over top one half there without removing it first. So let's open up edit on here and let's look at our autoexec.bat file on the C drive again and see if it's readable. And it's not. If you see from the top there, it's just a bunch of garbled text, and that is the encryption from one half. So because one half is not loaded in memory, because we didn't load from the hard disk with that infected master boot record, we don't have any usable files. Let's see if the config.sys hiding in this one test folder is readable. Now that file is okay. So that file is on the first half of the disk and has not been encrypted by one half. Let's try looking at a folder further down and see if it did get to that one. And we see the config sys on that folder has the encryption on it. So you can see that some files are okay because those are on the first half of the disk that are unencrypted. But these files that are on the other half of the later end of the disk that are encrypted they're totally not usable. 
So, if you were to use the fdisk slash mbr command and put a good master boot record over the infected one, well then all your files are non-recoverable that we saw there, except for the ones that are on the first half of the disk. Let's see if the command interpreter works. So the command interpreter there works. And it still works. Well, you see, some files work and some won't, but if they are an encrypted program, they will tend not to work. So, that's the one half virus. So now let's go ahead and see what we can do about clearing one half off the system. So again, we briefly saw the utility there, and it was actually made for the Slovakian government or something like that. Again, where the virus is believed to have originated from. I use one half there just to verify it. So we don't have it in memory because we loaded off a clean disk, but we still have our infected partition table. Yeah, developed for the Slovak Antivirus Center. And this came off of F-Secure's FTP server, which to this day still has this tool and some other t interesting tools on there as well that we might look at for future videos. So anyway, we're going to run one half slash D. And then it gives us a little thing for writing down the track and the constant. So it started at track 151 of the hard disk. So say yes. And with this hard drive, it can actually decrypt it pretty quick. But again, if you had a big hard drive, this again... The encryption would take quite a bit of time, and so would the decryption of it as well. So you had a potential to lose a lot of files and a lot of data if you had a big hard drive that one half worked on over a number of months to possibly even years. So we got one half off the disk. It's already put a clean boot record on there, so let's go ahead and reboot the computer. And we should not have any one half payload or any problems booting into MS-DOS. Although I just realized it would probably help if I took the reboot.command line out of autoexec.bat. So we proved there that obviously the disk is fine, because if, if we just had the clean boot record, the autoexec.bat file would not have loaded reboot.com as we saw from loading from the clean disk. So everything is there, everything is functional. So there, we have cleaned off the disk and we can of course just run the utility just for one last verification. There's one half not found on targeted disks, or targe disks, because there's some typos they had in this program. But anyway, that's the one half DOS virus for you, and how to clean it off a system that's infected with it.